For decades, scientists have debated the existence of engrams, the physical storage of memories in our brain. Intriguing recent research now reveals that ancestral memories may be inherited by offspring. Could traumatic memories inherited from our ancestors contribute to the rising incidence of mental illness? Nearly one in five Americans lives with some form of neuropsychiatric disorder, anxiety, depression, PTSD, etc. These disorders impose a significant burden on society. They can be debilitating for the afflicted and their loved ones, and treatment costs the U.S. hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Recent research in model organisms reveals that traumatic memories may be inherited across several generations and may predispose offspring to mental illness. Is this possible in humans? Could this knowledge give us a deeper understanding of ourselves and potentially even help to release people from the grasp of mental illness? Charles Darwin proposed the theory of natural selection, positing that inherited gene mutations provide offspring with a survival advantage in their environment. Around the same time, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck postulated that organisms could pass down acquired characteristics. He was ridiculed mercilessly. Acquired characteristics are biological changes that occur within an organism's lifetime due to use, disuse, or environmental effects. For example, resistance training causes muscle hypertrophy, an increase in muscle mass and strength. But you can't pass these traits down to your offspring, can you? Actually, studies show that exercise-induced benefits can be passed down to offspring. Not as larger muscles exactly, but as improved mitochondrial function or efficiency within the muscle. Memories are another form of acquired characteristic, a byproduct of our individual experiences interacting with the world around us. Acquiring particularly salient memories from our ancestors could help us know the challenges they faced in their environment and provide us with unique adaptations that ensure our own survival. For memories to be passed down, they first need to be stored as physical structures in the brain. If memories exist as physical remnants of experience, it is possible that they can be passed down to offspring. But this would require information stored in neurons to be transferred and encoded in germline, or sperm and egg cells. One lab found that transferring the RNA of sea slugs trained to respond to a gentle touch that was previously unknown to them could pass on this trained memory to other naive slugs. This suggests that RNA could be the signal that is used to transfer memories from neurons to germline. But how are these memories encoded and stored? Mounting evidence shows that epigenetic processes play a role in memory consolidation and help to transmit acquired memories across generations, especially when that memory is associated with a particularly salient experience, for example, one of trauma. Epigenetics derives from the Greek epi, above, and genetics, study of genes, the influence that acts above our genes to control their expression. Specifically, Environmental experiences control how our genes operate by turning them on or off in a context-dependent manner without changing the underlying genetic code. They do this by placing chemical marks, methylation, acetylation, phosphorylation, etc. on our DNA that dynamically change its structure. This change in structure makes specific genes more or less accessible to the transcriptional machinery that allows them to be expressed. In doing so, our cells are in a constant crosstalk with their environment to determine which genes to activate or repress to optimally respond to environmental conditions. Epigenetic programming has been shown to play a role in the memory consolidation of fear, pleasure, depression, and anxiety associated with particular stimuli. Could this be the mechanism through which memories of ancestral environments are passed down to offspring? One particularly impactful experiment showed that mice conditioned to fear the smell of acetone by pairing the smell with an electrical shock could pass on this fear to offspring that had never encountered acetone before. Researchers studying three generations of mice found that their brains had increased electrical activity, size, and number of the specific olfactory sensory neurons that responded to the smell of acetone. The scientists found that the fear of acetone was encoded through epigenetic changes in the parent's neurons that were transmitted and encoded in the genome and germline of subsequent offspring. A similar epigenetic signature was preserved on the sperm that would eventually become the offspring, but it subsequently disappeared on the sperm of the next generation. When it did, the fear of acetone was lost. Is it possible that trauma in humans can be passed down in the same way? Multiple studies chronicle data showing that this phenomenon occurs in humans as well. 
The Dutch Hunger Winter study, for example, looked at an extended period of famine toward the end of World War II, when Nazi soldiers blocked food supplies to the Netherlands for several months. This horrific act killed more than 20,000 people and left thousands more severely ill. Pregnant women were particularly vulnerable. The DHW study assessed the health of these women's children and grandchildren. It found that they had a higher incidence of obesity and were at higher risk for metabolic diseases such as type 2 diabetes. This suggests their bodies were programmed to alter their metabolism and hold on to every last calorie in case they too had to face a famine similar to that of their ancestors. Apparently, the children inherited an ancestral memory of prolonged food scarcity and were epigenetically programmed to anticipate similar circumstances. Understanding the role of transgenerational inheritance of ancestral memories in a human context has particular significance as our environments rapidly change from generation to generation. As such, many of the environmental stressors and traumas of our ancestors are not relevant in the context of our socially and technologically enhanced lives. Could the chronic stress, mental and metabolic diseases that are so prevalent in our generation be due in part to a heightened stress response inherited via epigenetic engrams of trauma passed down from our ancestors? If so, how does that change our understanding and level of compassion for individuals suffering from mental illness? If we understand the mechanism by which these ancestral memories are passed down, could we reverse it? We need to explore and investigate these important questions to deepen our understanding of mental health and find paths to better treatments and increased well-being. Follow the links below the video to see how you can help. Like, follow, subscribe, and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help save the world.